The block has a weight n. The force required, let's call it T required, the force required for pushing this block, meaning to cause the motion or the sliding of the block, you know that this is equal to n times the coefficient of friction which describes the interface between the block and the plate. So effectively what we're saying is that the coefficient of friction is the relationship between the force required to cause slippage and the weight of the block, which is the force that is normal to this interface. Now another term for this force, we could call this force the strength. Why? Because we define the motion of the block, the incipient motion of the block as failure. So the force that is producing that failure, in fact the force during the failure condition, which is the incipient motion of the block, is gets a special name, which is the strength. So the coefficient of friction is the relationship between the strength of the system and the normal force, in this case, acting on the interface. Now, this is the case of a solid block on a, or, a, or an object on a plate, right? For soil, what we do is, as you know, one way to do this is to take a specimen, place it in a direct shear device, where the bottom, let's say, is fixed, the top is free to move, right? We apply <clears throat> weights to the top of the specimen, and that weight divided by the cross-sectional area over which that weight acts is equal to the stress, normal stress, a sigma, right? Then we push the top <clears throat> with, a with, a, with a machine, basically, and we monitor the deformation and the load imposed during the deformation, or the load that, um, that is sensed, let's say, by the rod that pushes this top part <coughs> of the specimen, sorry. So this uh, produces a failure surface that is horizontal, right, in the specimen. And then what we do, as you know, is plot the deformation versus T, the force that we measure. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> the force that we measure uh, is a shear force, right, because it's a force that is parallel to the plane on which failure is occurring. If we divide that force by the area of this, failure plane or failure surface, we get a shear stress because this is a shear force, right? Shear stress acts here. So if we plot tau versus delta, we get, you know, we may get a curve like that. This curve is associated with this sigma that we applied, which is equal to some value. We, we impose this sigma, okay? And then we say, that this right here is the strength at the peak and this right here is the critical state strength associated with this tapering okay or this flat portion here now for the purposes of of, uh, of this class and continuing on we're going to assume that this is the strength that we're going to use for design for engineering so you can ignore this strength okay now what do we want? Remember that this is analogous to this, right? So what we want, just like here, is the relationship between the strength, 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 and the force in this case that is normal to the interface, in this case the sigma that is normal to the interface. Here's the interface. Here's this interface. Okay? So let's write it. Strength equals normal force times mu. Strength equals normal stress, right, times mu. So the relationship is this. Same as this. Strength over normal stress, strength over normal force, mu, mu. Okay? Now, 
few things. Remember, here, failure is the incipient motion of the block. Here, failure is what? It's a little bit um, more abstract, or appears to be. Why? Because this is always moving. So, you know, what's uh, during the test, I mean. So, you know, here, incipient motion, yes. But here, you know, what is it? Well, it's denoted here by the curve. As engineers, we decide, we've decided that this portion here, where increasing the deformation doesn't lead to any changes in resistance, this critical state region here, we're going to as assign the, the, the stress associated with that, the shear stress, and we're going to assign that shear stress the term strength. Okay, so that's, that's our definition of strength for this system. And our definition of strength for this one is the in just simply the incipient motion of the block. Now, if you were to run, if you wanted to know, sorry, if you wanted to know the relationship between the strength and the normal force for a block on a plate, what you would do is you would take a block. I'm repeating myself here, but I just want you to see this, this approach, which is the reverse approach. If you wanted the relationship, you would take a specific block, you know the weight, so you know N, and then you would push, 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 until this starts moving. The moment this starts moving, you know what force you are pushing with, and therefore you can say, I know what force I'm pushing with, or that I used, I know what force I used so, to, so as to slide the block, I know the weight of the block, so simply this is the relationship, so I'm done. So if you were looking for the relationship, you would do this experiment. Here, uh, if you're looking for the relationship between the strength and the normal stress, you would do this experiment. The thing is that, in this case, the case of soil, the relationship is a little bit more complex. Why? Because soil, first, may exhibit bonding between the grains. And two, the relationship may vary with this stress here. Okay? These are the two main reasons. So I'm going to show you how to get the relationship using the direct shear test for soil, which is not specifically this, but it's an expansion, let's say, of this. So let's do it. Let me just turn this around. 